Okay, so moving on to the third component here. This is around what I would call uh, having a global mindset. So this is a combination global of think globally and act locally. Now, again, if I take the three countries represented in this room, our population across the three countries represents only 6.5%, only 6.5% of the world population. And I think the message here is that <clears throat> looking outside our respective three countries um, can be a phenomenal reward in terms of a variety of different things because there's a lot of great things happening in those other um, 209 countries around the world. Not all the innovation is just happening in Mexico, Canada, or the US. And you know, an example here is that looking globally can be a phenomenal source for both product ideas, process ideas, or innovations. You know, I love this picture for a couple of reasons. It's not just for Rihanna and her great music, but she, of course, is holding and drinking of one of the world's best packages, right? Being a Tetra Pak package. And whilst that's not an advertisement, the, the, the call out here is, you know, Mike Turbin is with us in the audience. We're very privileged to have you, Mike. Thank you for coming. You know, Mike went to Brazil a number of years ago, right? So he went outside um, the home country and he saw what other people didn't see, right? He saw the possibilities. He saw coconut water, right? What was seen as a commodity back in the US and, and, and most of North, North, North America. He saw it a product that was being wasted, but a product that had phenomenal hydration and other nutritional values and brought that back uh, to the US. And now he and a number of other companies have really redefined and created a new beverage category, which didn't exist only a few years ago. And this has really also woken up the giants of Pepsi and other organizations to think what's happening within this space. So a very big congratulations to Mike and the team for that uh, foresight. The second example in terms of looking global, it can be a wonderful source, not just for product innovation ideas, but also for both raw material, okay, um, and also ideas that you can do with raw material. So if we just reflect for a little moment on, on something as simple as tea, okay? Tea traditionally has been an Asian-based uh, 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 drink, an ingredient. And if we look at you know, what the Western world has, has done in recent times, they've taken the concept of green tea and you've got the likes of Nestle who now have green tea uh, Kit Kat uh, confectionery with a, with, a, with a health proposition, so to speak, uh, in there. We have green teas, the, the, the example here in the center, in, um, as mainstream beverage products. We see green tea in ice cream. We see it in, in a range of other applications. Again, looking externally, bringing ideas in, adapting them can be a, uh, a huge source for, for growth. Also looking globally can be a wonderful source for talent, whether that talent be for full-time employment, whether it be for a, um, a range of consulting based. And if I just reflect on Tetra Pak, if we take our, our global marketing team who sits in Europe, we have some 37 different nationalities represented in that team. And, and why is that? Because it brings a huge dynamic, right, to, to innovative thinking uh, that you would otherwise not have when you start to think a little more singly focused. The last example here um, as to why it's good to look outside your own country, of course, is that <clears throat> It can give some insights as to what the competition is doing, and at times competition can also become local competitors. And um, you know, with these four examples I've just given, I, I also would just like to say that you know, Tetra Pak is your partner. We will happily um, do what we can and where we can with our resources to give you the insights on uh, these different areas as well. Okay, so let's move along to the fourth. Uh, point here, and this was the one around uncertainty. So when I opened <coughs> before, I talked about the last four years uh, have been difficult macroeconomic times. You know, the world is saddled with debt. We hear the terms, the big recession, the small recession, the big depression. 
regardless of what it is, you know, there's been a lot of um, media around the state of the economy on a global basis and the level of debt that is out there playing difficulty with the operations that we, uh, that we have. And <clears throat> one of the things that we see at Tetra Pak is that, you know, during these difficult economic uh, times, you know, there's both lessons and uh, a number of uh, uh, side effects. You know, companies will tr traditionally um, have a huge um, retraction, right, on investments. They will get caught on doing a lot of analysis um, and l almost looking for bad news, doing it over and over again. We see what I would call an innovation suffocation, where, you know, innovation budgets are substantially cut and at times also difficulty in terms of retaining talent. I think we all know, acknowledge and understand that during difficult times we have to sort of tighten the waist belt. There's no, there's no question about that. I think the call out here is to ensure that you know, we really keep our eye on the ball on the things that, uh, that matter, particularly around innovation and, uh, and cost competitiveness, et cetera, to make sure that we don't you know, overdo it and create too much uncertainty in our own workplace amongst our employees. Now, <clears throat> this is... Um, one of my favorite slides. We know who this guy is? Yeah, you know. It's um, Thomas Edison. And this quote from Thomas is really, I think, embodies one of the messages around um, dealing with uncertainty. And that is, you need to continue to perform whilst transforming. And I guess for us at Tetra Pak, that is really one of the key messages as we, as we see the industry consolidate, as we see more competitive uh, pressure, you know, as an organization, whilst you tighten, tighten your waist belt, you also need to continue to perform. Because if you don't, you're going to get eaten by the fast. And I think um, this is a, uh, a great lesson um, in, in the quotation here. And if I was to call out an example, um, and there could be many that could be given here of a company who I think really shields its organization uh, to a large extent from uncertainty and who has relatively thrived through difficult economic times. You know, it's, uh, it's Apple, right? Um, when you reflect on the average price point of an Apple product, it takes a relatively brave organization to believe in its technology and strengths to really push through um, the last four or five years and release onto the market and to continue with the research and development that they've been doing to uh, really be successful in what would be otherwise dubbed very difficult uh, economic times. You know, Apple, I think, are a world-class example that shield their organization from the external noise, okay? They remain very externally focused versus becoming too right, internally focused in, or in order to ensure that they remain focused on the market opportunity and, and remain focused on the customer. They have kept the hammer down, right, when it comes to the innovation uh, throttle. They haven't uh, contracted. And of course, through this, they've built world-class supply chains, both highly reliable in terms of product supply and also very, very cost competitive versus their Asian counterparts, which is where, of course, they source the bulk of their uh, components. Okay, so on to the last example, and this is around innovation. Very briefly here, because John is going to uh, go into more detail on this, on this great theme. But I think we all understand and know that there is no question that innovation in itself is a absolute key driver, right, to, um, to top and bottom line um, growth. And when one is establishing and trying to create an innovation mindset in the organization. You know, I have a couple of examples that I would like to give a you know, high level of what I think are really you know, great uh, companies in, in, in their areas. And one is, um, well, the first step is to think right, beyond the product. So what do I mean by think beyond the product? A lot of times, organizations will look at the, the product portfolio that they have and use that as the starting point uh, for the next. What Nabisco did, and this is a great example, and this actually links back to the social media and social media profiling platform that I talked on earlier. They again monitored online chatting 
from people who were interested in on-the-go snacking but wanted a low-calorie solution. Right? They didn't want the two or three hundred calorie solution for each chocolate biscuit or uh, whatever it may be when they consume it. So what did they do? They developed uh, the Oreo brand and maximum a 100 calorie single serve uh, a product that people could indulge and enjoy but not feel guilty about, particularly the millennials, etc., cetera, um, when they had the product. It's been phenomenally uh, successful. Convenience, healthy, on the go, small size. The second one <clears throat> uh, notion here is about to develop and, and create an innovation mindset in the organization. You know, innovation should be everyone's job. It's, it's not just for the research and development department. It should be everyone, from the receptionist right through the organization. You know, Whole Foods, again, many examples, but Whole Foods is, is one company, I think, that does this uh, incredibly well, where they've got a rather systematic process that they have operationally in their stores around innovation with, with competitions and, and uh, sharing mechanisms to ensure that, that things are moving uh, and shared at a high speed around uh, innovation, and they reward innovation operationally and also in the center um, uh, of their operations corporately as well. Then the third concept here is that you know, innovation is not just about brainstorming. You can't just set a point in time and say, hey, let's you know, develop a, uh, a new product. And Samsung, uh, I think, is a great example from Asia where they have a, a very well-defined structured, highly creative, and, dy and dynamic uh, process in their product development and innovation. And um, I got to see this in part a number of years ago when I was um, near one of their facilities in Korea. And just to give you an idea about the intensity, right, of, of what someone like a Samsung does, you know, for their level one projects, when, they, uh, when the heat is really on and they're really driving with speed, they basically have these innovation hothouses where they will, where they will host the, uh, the employees sometimes for days, sometimes for weeks, where they will effectively stay and stay focused on the one project. They don't get um, distracted with other things in the organization or multi-projects. And what they do with that is they work 24 seven around the clock. They get continuity, they get focus, and they get products coming out of the pipeline much more accurately, according to brief, and also with a phenomenal speed. The last example here is about leveraging your strengths and not always listening to the consumer. And we've all read this, we've all heard about it, and you know, I think Steve Jobs is, a, is an absolute outstanding example here of a CEO captain who really believed in what the organization was developing from a technology perspective. It was well ahead of what consumers or retailers thought was possible or thought that they were needed, and they drove this belief and focus deep, fast, and hard, and have continued to do so uh, in Apple. And uh, again, I'm not saying here, don't listen to the uh, consumer. What I'm saying is I think uh, Apple is a good example of finding a balance between possibly doing both and realizing an opportunity. So with that little journey, um, I've covered at a very high level uh, the five themes that we feel really help contribute to redefining reality and becoming more competitive, right, under the block of innovation, being fast and accurate at what you do, segmenting the market, particularly calling out the opportunity with millennials and also baby boomers with over 200 plus million of those in North America, thinking global but respecting and acting, acting local, and really shielding the organization and navigating successfully during uncertain times. So I hope that by the end of tomorrow afternoon that uh, we've been successful in terms of unlocking some of the thinking uh, that we have um, here amongst our wonderful industry. I know that we have a world-class set of speakers to follow. And again, I thank you for investing the time being here with us, and um, let's enjoy the balance of the program. Thank you very much.